Shalom Aleichem family. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. It's morning here for me. I've got my, I got my coffee. Uh, the Lord has put something on my heart that I want to share with you. I feel it is important. Many people don't understand it. Many people don't don't see it this way. Uh, but I want to title this video, Who is Called? Because the spirit, the evil spirits attack me. I believe they were evil spirits. I don't believe, as the Lord spoke when he walked upon this earth, the devil cannot cast out the devil. He, the house will not survive. It will not stand if it is divided. So I do not believe the spirit that came upon me, that, that, that attacked me, was truly 100% the spirit of the Father. I believe there was some temptation involved, and that spirit filled a gap in that person, in that soul. He filled a gap that was lacking the Holy Spirit. He, he got his foot in the door. And he used that person to try to stop me. Basically trying to stop anyone of, on this planet that is trying to sow seeds and spread the word of, of, of faith, the love of God, and do his will. That's what I believe happened. Because I wanted to go and make this video. This is put on my heart to do this. I feel it's a strong message. It needs to be preached. It needs to be teached. Can I do it perfectly? No, I cannot. I am living within a corrupt flesh uh, who Satan himself as a serpent deceived and told a lie. And we were deceived. I believe it's all part of the plan. It was all to be that we are tested uh, continually. I can't say that we're, many are tested every day, but I can't say that I've been tested every day. There have been some good days and bad days. Uh, I'm no greater than anyone. I, I am not here to edify myself. I am not here to point the finger at nobody. Uh, we can get into that later. Uh, what, what judging is, what warning is, I'm here to warn. I'm here to sow seeds, warning the soul, uh, of where they may go. Little rhyme there, huh? <laughs> okay, so who is called? I want to, before I read this scripture, I want to say, how do we know? I want to ask a rhetorical question. How do we know whom is called to preach and teach? How do we know? Are we recognizing his nudging us to go and sow the seeds. Let me bring this my little notepad over here in front of me. Do we know he can use many different ways to call us? Many different ways. We can hear somebody else preach and teach and doing their calling of God's will. Can we feel it amongst ourselves in our prayers? Uh, maybe there's a, some uh, angel on this shoulder, angel on this shoulder, whispering in her ear. Uh, you know, when those things come, when they come, when those messages come, when, excuse me, when those, when those whispers come, do we think they are coincidence? That's what devil, that's what the devil, he, he brought up the coincidence. Nothing's coincidence. He's the one that created coincidence or, or uses coincidence. The Lord created everything. He uses a coincidence. You know, is, is, it, is it what Satan wants us to believe as a coincidence? No, it's the Holy Spirit whispering and tapping us with that calling. Now, I want to throw an example out there. A parable, if you will, maybe. I, I want to call it an example because it's not a story. It's basically an example of uh, some food for thought that you should ponder on, think about. We as children of our parents, we love our parents. Have we not 
edified our parents and told stories about them to other people, you know, glorifying our parents. And if you're a parent and you have children, have you not done the same thing for your children when they do good? You, you praise them and tell others about what they've done, you know, because of your love for them, love for our children, our love for our parents. How about a friend, a friend who's done something really good for us and we love it. Have we not edified that friend and told others what he did? What she did? What about those who idolize other figures in the world? Sports stars, rock and roll stars, hip hop stars, movie stars, uh, false preachers. Have we not edified those people because we love them? Have we not edified those people and talked about all what they did? So then there's us. Uh, the people that, that, that actually go out and preach the will of God and what he has taught us to do, what he has called us to do. And I believe everybody is called. Everybody. There's not a soul that hasn't been called, and we'll get into that. That's going to be my first scripture. We'll get into that. But we love him above all else. There is no other love above the love for the creator. And because of that love, it causes us to want to go out and share his magnificent glory, preach his word, do his will, and sow the seeds that, there, that he may rejoice in the fruit of the harvest. Not me, that he, I only labor for him. So I hope that's example is, is good enough to even, I, I understand some folks may not even understand that, but I hope that is a good enough example to show where I'm going with this, that it's the love of God that causes us to answer the calling. And why not give him that love? He deserves it. He done it all. He's even sacrificed, come, he's manifested, manifested in this, in the flesh himself as a son of God and, and was sacrificed for all of us that we may have everlasting glory living in him, dwelling in him as he in us. So if we love him above all else, why don't we feel that want to, that want to, to go out and share his wisdom that he's bestowed upon us through the Holy Spirit and give him all the praise and all the glory and teach his will and his ways. So without further ado, if you could turn your Bibles, I hope you got your Bibles out because I, I get my Bible whenever I'm listening to somebody, I got my Bible out. I got three, I got three notepads, actually more than that. I got, I got notepads. I'm taking notes. I'm writing stuff down because the Lord even told Satan when he, when he tried to tempt him out there in the wilderness for those 40 days, he, the Lord told him, it is written. It is written. Why is it written? That's like a contract. So if we write things down to the Lord, are we not making a contract with the Lord? So he said, it is written. So my first scripture is Matthew 22, verse 14. So if you will, turn to, your, turn to Matthew 22, verse 14. I got to get there myself. And this is, the, this is going to be, I want to call this the highlight scripture of this message. For many are called but few are chosen, Matthew 24, 14. I do the King James Version. I think it's the uh, closest thing to not being perverted in the English language that we can get. I think it's the closest. Everything after that seems to have some sort of perversion. They, the, the book, this book says not to add or subtract, and other versions of the Bible have added and subtracted. So... I can't read Hebrew. I would I would love to learn Hebrew and read the Hebrew Bible, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls and whatnot. But I haven't got that far yet. I'm still 
a babe in Christ, although I do have a ton of knowledge, a ton. It is deep. Uh, I do more than just go to church and sit there and listen to some man up on the pulpit preach to me and believe everything he says. I have to take it all. I have to look it up in the Bible and study it, take it all to the Father, to the Holy Spirit, to the Son, pray in his name, and ask for the discernment. Sometimes it's quick. Sometimes it takes a while. He moves us in all different kinds of ways. Uh, anything that I look at on video is the same thing. Uh, in our group, people say stuff. Even the guy that, that's running, Brother Anthony, he's running the video. He's running the Discord. He's running his Zoom calls that we're on. All what he says, I even take that. I even take that. To the Lord, in prayer, for the simple reason, Matthew 24 and verse 4, the first thing out of the Lord's mouth when the, when the disciples asked him what are the signs? What will it be when the end times come? And the first thing out of the Messiah's mouth was, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. And that old serpent's going to use all kinds of tools to deceive you. Everything. We can't even imagine some of the tools he's using right now. And that's why we don't believe are, that's why a lot of people don't believe what's going on in this world is, is scripture because Satan is using stuff we can't even imagine as tools to deceive us, and he is successful. And it's all in God's plan because I believe it's the volunteer system. The volunteer is going to be the most faithful. The forced, the forced into worship are going to be the rebellious. We see that in the army as another parable. The volunteer army fights harder and better than the forced army, the ones that are drafted. They don't want to fight. They don't want to be there. They feel like they were uh, forced into something they didn't want to do. So my next scripture is Mark 16 and 15. And this is where it becomes, uh, this is where it starts out after Mark, uh, Matthew 22 and uh, uh, 14. We go to Mark 16 and verse 15, and this is after the resurrection. This is when the Lord, this is when the Lord is uh, come to the disciples. Some of them have already seen him, and they're, they're telling everybody, we've seen him, we've seen him. They believe not. And then the Lord shows up, and the first thing he says to them when he starts his little telling them his, uh, giving them some commandments to do. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every preacher. And yes, this, 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 I mean, to every creature, excuse me again, this, uh, this particular scripture. Yes. He's talking to the disciples and many people will just pick out this one scripture and they're going to bring it and try to throw it in my face and say, he's talking to the disciples. He's not talking to us. We're going to get into that. Because yes, he is. Yes, he is. But what is he telling them to do? Go ye into all the world, all the world, everywhere, all four corners, and preach the gospel to every creature, man, woman, and child. Preach it to them. Okay, so let's dig into another verse. Let's go to 24, Matthew, back to Matthew. Sorry if I'm making you jump back and forth. I put some tabs on mine so I could find them, uh, the books a little faster. And uh, Matthew 24, 14. And here's where it, I can come at the next couple of scriptures, I can come at those people and show them that, yes, that scripture he was talking to the disciples, but what about this scripture? Remember, we don't pick and choose certain scripture. We take the whole Bible. We take the whole, he's got the whole world in his hand. We take the whole Bible and we put it together to find out what God's will is. We can't pick and choose because that's what the devil wants. 
He uses scripture. That's one of his tools. He uses scriptures against us to deceive us, to make us think that the Lord doesn't want us to do things when if we read the whole Bible and it all comes together as one, we get the full meaning, the full knowledge of his will. Now, I'm having trouble. The devil's messing with me. He's messing with me. He's trying to end this video, and I, this is like the fifth, fifth attempt to get this video done. And it's going to be a little bit lengthy. I apologize for the length. You can always pause it and come back to it later. But Matthew 24 and 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Nations is ethnic, eth, uh, ethnics. It's, it's, it's Oriental, uh, uh, African-American, African, whichever you want to say that, uh, Caucasian, uh, uh, Latino, uh, Arabic, all the uh, nations. And then shall the end come. Now, it didn't, it didn't write that verse right there. I don't see anywhere in that verse that it, it picks out a specific person to do this. It just says, and this. So let's go back up of one. And because, number 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow, shall wax cold. Uh, that was a favorite verse of mine back a couple of years ago when all this craziness in the world started. 13, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And we just read 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the, the world, and, and then shall the end come. 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of the revelation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place. So nowhere in there does it say that only the disciples are going to preach it. Nowhere in there does it say, does any of our pastors, uh, I don't want to use rabbis and bishops because the Bible says not to use those. Pastors and ministers, I can see those. No one except our biological dad and the creator are even entitled to the word title father, where it says in the, this book not to call anybody father except the father and who brought you into this world, your, your biological dad, who sowed that, you know, that seed to bring you here to do God's will because we were all known before we were ever in the womb. He already knew us. So he knows all things. So with that said, I got more scripture to back this up. More scripture. Let's let's move to <clears throat> Acts chapter 10. Let's go to Acts chapter 10 and see what that says. Acts chapter 10, verse 42, at the end of the, close to the end. Acts chapter 10, verse 42, it states, and he commanded us to preach us. Ooh, he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. We're not to be the judge. We sound a trumpet. Did you hear what this started this video? I was sounding a shofar. I found a shofar blowing. That is, the, that is the four notes that start off uh, the Feast of Trumpets. The warning call to atonement, to sanctification, to get yourself ready. Uh, that is what the Feast of Trumpets is, is to get yourself ready for the Day of Atonement that we should all be judged of our good and bad works that we have done in this world. And if we live a repentance, a lifestyle of repentance, a daily repentance, then those bad works will be washed clean through the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahusha, the Messiah. So 
That right there is another verse. Let's go to Romans. Go one more book over. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, the same chapter. See what it says. It's a different verse. <coughs> verse 15 in this one, excuse me. <coughs> and how shall they preach except they be sent? Many are called, few are chosen. As it is written, woo, there we go again. It is written. We write things down as a contract. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Is that not what we're preaching? We're trying to warn people of the consequences of their actions so that we may bring green tidings, great glad tidings so that they may understand the rewards that we cannot see yet. The rewards that we cannot see are going to be way greater than any reward for what we do for Satan that he's showing us right now. Cause we're not, we came in this world with nothing. We're surely going to leave this world with nothing. Only our soul. So I hope this video is a blessing so far. I hope this is a blessing because the Holy Spirit sure blessed me with all this knowledge. Now, let's go on back. I wanted to try to keep most of this. It might be get a, a little bit, get out of hand, I get out of, out of whack a little bit, but I was trying to start at one side of the Bible and work my way through. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, right here in the close to the beginning. Chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. So if I sow the Lord's seed and spread his gospel, that means I am dwelling within him and he within me. We are one. Same with the body of Christ. If we believe and, and walk into faith, we are one. We are, he is dwelling in us and us in him. We are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. So preaching the gospel is a good work. It is labor. There is some doctrine out there that try to tell you all you got to do is say the sinner's prayer, believe, and your work is done. No, 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 no. If your work is done and you are good to go from then point on, why does Satan continue to try to tempt you to bring you down? Think about it, saints. Why does he try to keep continually tempting you and bring you down? Because you have to keep working. You have to keep uh, working out your salvation daily through trembling and prayer, sanctification. We have to study, continually study, to show ourselves approved. If you're not studying, you're being deceived. If you're not studying, you're being deceived. We're to study. The Lord said to watch and pray. Watching is not only opening your eyes and seeing what's going on, but studying so that you know when it's coming upon you, so that you may keep your faith guarded that you will not stumble, that you might stumble a little bit, but to try to keep yourself from actually falling from the stumble. We're not to let these temptations linger. We're not to give them uh, room to grow. We're not to entertain those temptations. We're to rebuke them quickly as fast as we can. When we recognize the temptation, we're to rebuke it quickly, get it gone. Because that, that right there is Satan trying to get his foot in the door. He's found a little, a little gap. We've done something that we've opened the door a little bit, and we've, we've spilled out some Holy Spirit, and it's left a gap that Satan's trying to get his foot in that gap. He's, trying to, he's fine to trying to find every little crack and crevice that he can get his foot in that door to tempt you. 
So if you're continually filled with the Holy Spirit, there's no room for Satan. Then and only then can you continually be sealed. So you must continually work and strive to stay pure and stay atoned, stay washed clean through the blood, praying and fasting. The Apostle Paul said we must pray without ceasing. That means we must continually walk, continually pray, continually work through sanctification that we may, we, we, we got to keep on, keep on, run the race like you're trying to win. Don't go out there and jog, looking all up in the stands, trying to find out who's, who's cheering you on. No, 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 no. Don't worry about them folks. Don't worry about them folks. You got to run the race like you're trying to win. Not that you're, you're going to beat all your other brethren that's running with you. That's not, that's not what he's trying to say. We're trying to run the race so we finish it in victory, the Lord's victory. And when our soul makes it to the promised land, that's the victory. And we want all of our brothers to, we all want to cross the line at the same time. That's what I'm preaching about. We're all trying to cross that finish line at the same time. We're not trying to beat nobody, edify ourselves above nobody. We're trying to get there at all at the same time. We're all on a level playing field. Okay, let's go to verse 14 in that chapter. Verse 14 has some weight. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So all of the all of our callings, whether you believe or not, all of our callings has got a reward. So if I, th this is it's a parable, this is an, an example. If I do not sow the seeds, if I do not warn somebody of what they're doing, I see it blatantly. I see it, what they're doing. They're just sinning over there. I ain't going over there to judge them. I'm going over there to say, hey, do you know that what you're doing could cause a consequence? I mean, every action is a consequence. There is one. Do you not know that, you know, do you know the Lord? He loves you. He doesn't want you to do what you're doing. You know, something similar to that, you can, you can say, hey, uh, uh, that's not very friendly. That's not very loving. That's not very kind for you to do that to so-and-so, whatever it is they're doing or, or, or something like that. No, we're warning them. We warn them, and if we if we let them people continue in sin and they and they fall at the end and they don't finish the race and they end up over there in that 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 cesspool of flames and and, and brimstone, what reward are we going to get for that? So if we're out there sowing seeds and we're warning and trying to win souls to, and bear good fruit for the Lord, we get that reward. It just said it right there. And the other scripture, it just said it right there. Let's see what chapter 6 says. I got chapter 6 wrote down. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see what it says. Go to verse 11. Excuse me. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by, circle that word, the spirit of our God. So that verse right there, by, he had to do something. We were sanctified by, something happened. Were we called? Did we answer the call if we were sanctified by? Think about it, saints. Now, let's move to chapter 15. Let's see here. I've got chapter 15 wrote down. Let's see what chapter 15 says. Chapter 15, 1 Corinthians, the very beginning, verses 1 through 4. Let me read that. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, declare unto you. He preached it. He showed you the truth of it. Which I preached unto you, and there it is. You know, that's the explaining of what the declaration is. The declaration is, 
which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Do you stand in the Word of God? Are you working at it daily? If you're not standing in it, then where are you? You've, you've fallen away. You've departed from the faith if you're not standing in it. If you had once had it, you've left it. If you've never had it, you know, you, you were trying to get it to you that you understand. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved because the word of God, believing, having faith is what saves us. I mean, we have to have more than belief. We have to walk into faith. We can't be lukewarm. We can't say just because we believe everything's all hunky-dory. The demons believe, yet they still tremble because they know where they're going. They're, they're, they're scared of the Lord because they know where they're going, and they have came down and took uh, daughters of men and defiled them. They've defiled themselves, doing what they weren't supposed to do. They tried to get Enoch to write a partition for them, a, a pardon. That didn't work. No, y'all, y'all, uh-uh. This is the uh, uh, abomination you did. You've tried to destroy the image of God with what you did, and, and there, is no, there is no returning from that. There's no returning from that. If we keep in memory, if we keep some of these words, we have to pay attention to some of these words. This is the study part. If we keep... In memory, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in what, brothers and sisters? Vain. Do we know what vain is? That means we're acting it out, but we don't believe. That means we believe, but we ain't walking in faith. We're doing it in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. He received it. I've received it. Now I'm getting, trying to give it to you. I'm trying to share it with you. Paul did the same thing. Peter did the same thing. Thomas did the same thing. Timothy did the same thing. They all did this. Others did it. Other people are doing it today. Not, I'm not the only one. Many of us are doing it. Excuse me, saints. My coffee's getting cold. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first, of which was also I received, I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is what we, this is what we believe. And not only do we believe this, we have to put faith in this that all of this was part of the plan. This was part of the plan that we must put faith in this, that he is coming back for those who believe this and walk in this, that preach this, that share this gospel, that sow these seeds, so more fruit, that the harvest is abundant. That is our purpose that is what we're here to do. That is what we're called to do, every last one of us, who will reach out, grab a hold of that calling, grab a hold of that cross, and follow the Christ with that cross in their hand. Who's going, who, who, who can do it? I hope every last one of us can do it. I pray every last one of us can do it. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to answer that call best I can. Am I professional at it? No, don't want to be a professional. I ask you for no money. Please do not send me any money. I am not here to get rich off of the word of God. That is not, no, I do not believe in that at all. No, 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 no. I am not laying up treasures here on earth. My heart lays up treasures in heaven. My heart wishes to be in the glory of God one day. I hope it's soon. For what's going on in the world, it feels like it's really soon. And I am running that race stronger than ever before. 
because of that, because of that feeling that the Holy Spirit's putting on me. He's, 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 he's saying, don't you slip up and fall right now because before you get up, you could bounce off the ground when you slip and fall and be right back up. But is that enough time? He is going to come quicker than we could ever imagine. It's going to be a moment, a twinkling of the eye. As soon as you hit the ground and before you can bounce back up in, re in repentance, we have to be careful. So I am running that race like never before. I am, I am trying to answer the call the best I can. I am trying to do my part for the Lord's will and not my own will. For the Lord's will, I pray that his will be done on heaven and in earth. Your will be done, Father. And he has bestowed upon me all of this. I get chills running down my back whenever the spirit moves within me. And when I feel that power, that glorious love that, that we can hardly imagine, <whistles> tears run down my face when I feel that love. Because why do tears run down my face? It's not sadness. Oh, it's that want. It's that wow. Wow, give me more, Lord. Give me more. I want it all. I want your love, Father. It's so, it feels so great and wonderful. I want more of it. And, it, and, and I cry because I can't have it just yet because we, we have to keep pushing. We have to keep running that race. We have to keep going. We have to keep sowing these seeds until it is time. We have to keep watching and praying and being patient. Let not the fear of this world become us. We are of a sound mind and we have power to overcome this fear and only fear the Father. So let's move on. Let's move on, saints. Let's go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians and turn to chapter chapter 5. I'm going to do a little backtracking in this one, but let's start off in chapter 5. Chapter 5, the first two verses, and it states, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be that 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 child that wants to to, you know. They say, uh, the first three years of a child's life, he 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 learns more than he ever will. He brings in and takes in more knowledge than he will the rest of his life, because those first three years is when they learn to talk, they learn to walk, they learn to think. They learn, they learn right from wrong. They learn how most of them, I mean, depending on, you know, what influence they have, they may, within the first three years, learn how to read. A lot of people giving them their devices, these phones, uh, tablets, whatever. These kids know more about these things than we do because we're scared to touch all these buttons. Excuse me. We're scared to touch all these buttons. Them kids ain't. They're tapping this, tapping that, seeing what it does. They're learning faster than we are because they're just out there doing it. They're just tapping, 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 see what it does. So we are to be like little children. Therefore, ye, therefore, followers of God are dear children. I'm trying to be like a child. I'm trying to soak up. I'm trying to be that biscuit parable. I'm trying to be that biscuit, soak up all God's gravy. I want all his wisdom even though I know this fleshly mind, this earthly mind right now cannot hold it all. It's so deep. I'm trying to swim down to the drain. Can't even make it there. I'm trying to swim down to the drain. I'm, I'm, I'm way out of the shallow end. I'm already learned to swim. I'm trying to get down there to that drain to see what's down there. I want to know all God's wisdom. Like a little child, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn all I can learn. I'm trying to learn it all. Verse 2, and we walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Man, I can't wait. Lord hath given us these blessings of smell, taste, sight, hearing. We hear so much beauty. We taste so much uh, beauty. We see so much beauty. We can smell so much beauty of his creation here on earth. 
Can you imagine how it's going to be when we are in his glory? Mmm. Mmm. And these people don't want that. They can't, they can't think about this stuff for they are blinded by Satan's uh, toys that he gives them. They're all blinded by that. They can't see past it. But I just, I just think about what the Lord has for us waiting. I can't even imagine what it is. But I know it's better than anything I've ever had here. I know it's better. I do know this. Mmm. Mmm. Think about it, saints. Okay, now let's back up. My Bible is on the same, it's in the same split here, but let's back up to uh, chapter four. Chapter four, verse 22 through 24. Verse 22 states that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we put off the old man. And we put on a new, let me make sure, I'm going to touch the screen, make sure that this thing's still recording, 41 minutes in, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. The corrupted, deceitful lusts is Satan's works. And I don't want to work for Satan. I put off all his stuff. Where I've come from, my testimony is deep. I've been locked up. I've, I've, been on the, the, the streets of whoredom, lived in the middle of it. Where I come from in, 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 in the southern part of the city, uh, a lot of people know it as the hood. Now, did I live back in the island where the gangsters are living? No, I wasn't that deep in the hood. But I was in the, I grew up in the hood. Verse 23, and he renewed in the spirit your mind. This is when he, you accept him and he comes into your life. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, trying to empty out and sweep your dwelling clean of any demons, of any area that Satan tries to put his foot in the door, you sweep all that clean, but you can't leave your house empty. You have to fill it with the Holy Spirit. And he renewed in the spirit of your mind. So you have to you have to let him come in and fill you. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And when you put on this new man, that's when you feel these angels whispering in your ear, nudging you. Go on. Go tell them about us. Go tell them about the Father. Go spread the gospel. He's nudging you. He's telling you. Go tell them what you know. Go show them the happiness that you found. Go show them and tell them the love that you feel from the Holy Spirit. Tell them how great it is that they may know as well. Share. Don't be selfish. Share. Let you think about that, saints. Don't be jealous. Share. So if we're to share the word of God, are we not called to spread his calling, his seed, that more shall be fruitful, that they may go out and help us who are already sharing, that our army of sharers grows? For the Lord wishes no man to be condemned. He wants everyone to be saved. But he has to give you a freedom of choice. Why? So that you freely come to him, that you are freely loyal to him, that you are not forced into rebellion by him. He gives you the freedom of choice so that you want to love him, be with him, worship him forever and ever. Think about it, saints. Think about it. And pause right there. Sister Marcia says, I'm going to pause right there. Oh, let's go back to Colossians. Where's Colossians at? Nope, let's go to Colossians. 
First chapter. <coughs> Verse 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, here we go. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful, underline fruitful. Is that not sharing the word of God? Remember, I stated something about fruits of the harvest. Being fruitful. Understand these words, saints. Understand these words, family. Understand all these words, brothers and sisters. Brother Anthony's even talked about, about it. Got to, got to pay attention to these words. If, but, might, we, fruitful, blessings. We're being fruitful in every good work. Every good work. Even the New Testament. Some people say we're not in the Old Testament no more. Talking about works. New Testament here, talking about some works. Good works. And increasing in the knowledge of God. So, if we're not sharing what we know, how can those others, how can that other fruit, good or bad, increase in the knowledge of God? Think about it, saints. Think about it, saints. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope that you answer the call and go out and share your knowledge bestowed upon you to others that you may sow good seed and be fruitful in the Lord, doing His will as many of us, uh, many others of us do. Or did I say that right? Many others do. Let's just put it that way. As many others do, uh, go out. They've, they've heard the call and they go out and they share the knowledge of God. They show his love, living their lives as perfect as they can. We're not all perfect. Excuse me, everyone, everyone stumbles. So with that said, please like and share this video that many souls may uh, see and understand that maybe this this message will uh, call study. Uh, I, I love it when people study, that they grow in Christ, that they know and, and learn more of his wisdom and knowledge, that, that they pray for his discernment be, to be bestowed upon them. Uh, if, this, if this has been a blessing to you, please like it so that we may defeat the uh, algorithm that more souls see this message that God's will is done and and more souls are saved that's all I do this for is to reach lost souls uh, to help those who are saved grow uh, and I hope that there are messages that come back to me to help me grow as well so if anyone has any any knowledge they can share, drop it in the comment section. Love you all, and may the Father's face shine upon you and keep you and bless you. Amen.